everybody's perch. I mentioned this in another video, but uh, let's talk about it a little bit further because it, uh, it, this is where you start to perhaps see some of the dots lining up. So you saw the video probably a couple days ago about the Fantastic Four book by Alex Ross that was sort of licensed out, meaning it wasn't published through Marvel. It was actually published through someone else. And Alex Ross had a lot of creative control over it. Felt a lot more like when Disney Press gets other people to do books within this universe. So Marvel really had very little say over this title. And it turns out it's one of the best-selling books, uh, comics, and books on Amazon. Um, it's it's doing tremendously well sales uh, right now. And it's it's absolutely you know dominating all of Marvel's other graphic novels that they have out for sale. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a good sign that you can put a high profile creator. You could put a Alex Ross on a book like this. It gives you hope that at some point, uh, somebody like a Walt Simonson would get to do, you know, a 64 page graphic novel outside of kind of Marvel's interference. And that would still be pretty amazing to see, or, you know, you reunite some of the classic Captain America hell. I mean, if you're a publisher out there and you're looking to do kind of a licensed book, Maybe you got to uh, go tap on John Byrne's shoulder and do the whole else win thing. Well, anyway, it's done quite well. And what's happened with this Alex Ross book is it's standing kind of shoulder to shoulder alongside the other things that are selling really well on Amazon right now. And a number of those are produced by Viz. So what, you know, really quickly, what is Viz? Um, Viz as a publisher um, has uh, basically captured this manga and anime kind of global entertainment, really with their partnership with Shonen Jump being able to produce a pretty tremendous amount of work here in the US and they are doing incredibly well. Uh, Viz Media is an American publisher founded back in 86 and, uh, and basically since about 2005, a little bit later, um, they started this uh, partnership with Shoeisha that led to basically in 2017, Viz becoming the largest publisher of graphic novels, full stop, in the United States. And in 2020, uh, Viz Media saw a 70% growth in the US market, which uh, you know led to basically manga taking over. So when you talk about you know manga's dominance, um, it's easy to talk about the content and everything else, but you do need to bring Viz into the picture because Viz as the publisher, as the licensor, help to make a lot of that happen. If this didn't exist, it's highly questionable that a lot of these, these books would be here. Um, they were forward thinking. So keep in mind, when they came in, they signed some of these deals. Manga was, was nowhere close to as popular in the U.S., and it was far more of a gamble. Like They signed this deal kind of in the midst of manga having a bit of a collapse in the U.S., which, uh, which frankly, uh, we don't know their financials, but probably means they got a pretty good deal out of the whole mix. At any rate, um, Viz, uh, you know, what does Viz publish? Well, pretty much uh, all of the, the popular things that uh, they're out right now uh, because, you know, their relationship with Shueisha is, is allowing them to bring a lot of the Shonen Jump material. That's, of course, One Piece. That's uh, all. That's, that's, I'm, I'm always going to, you know, fanboy for, for One Piece. But if you look at their stuff that they put out, it is a massive, massive collection. Full Metal Alchemist, um, you know, it, 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 is, it is a huge volume uh, of content. I mean, every, pretty much almost anything uh, you, can, you can come up with, uh, they, they brought it out. And they have several different um, kind of different uh, you know, play pieces of their, uh, of their work, uh, different lines that they've put out, but um, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, you have My Hero Academia, you have Naruto, you have One Punch Man. I mean, you, you can go down the list and everything that is popular is coming out of these guys. So uh, Viz has done an absolute tremendous job and they have a, a complete lock on what's going on uh, here in, in the U.S. They've also published a couple Marvel things. That's why this uh, particular announcement, or why I start with the Alex Ross thing, caught my eye. So basically, this announcement, New York City Comic Con, three new titles launching in 2023 around the summer. New deal titles are Wolverine Snicked, Spider-Man Fake Red, and Marvel Comics and Manga Tribute. Now, um, these, are not, uh, these are not new, meaning they, they're already in the can. They've been done. Wolverine Snicked, coming out in June by writer-artist Tsingbu, 
Nike is a, basically it's a special edition of the title that was originally produced back in 2003. Some remastering has gone on. This is a dark take on Wolverine. It's not typical kind of manga anime fare. Uh, this is uh, Logan in a desolate wasteland. Only hope for the last members of the human race who fight to survive against killer robotic organisms. In many ways, maybe the better end to Hickman's uh, whole story than what we got. Then you have Spider-Man Fake Red um, coming out in June. Uh, same day, by the way, it was Wolverine Snicked. Um, and that's by Yusuke Osawa. And it is about uh, you, uh, who is failing socially and academically, finds a Spider-Man costume in Alley, and begins pretending to be Spider-Man kind of for the fun of it. But when Superman, uh, super villains emerge and go after him, he discovers there's more to learn about being a hero and a superhero. So it's, it's I don't want to say it's a lighthearted take, but definitely kind of a, you know, it's a Spider-Man is MIA. And so this, this person who's clearly not Spider-Man has somehow saved the city against a number of villains. Uh, like the Scorpion and Venom and, and others. It's a good, for those who have read it, it's it's a pretty pretty great uh, comic and definitely has a lot of heart to it. Something that's been missing in a lot of the Spider-Man comics lately. And then Marvel Comics and Manga Tribute, it's uh, got 20 Japanese artists. And these are a bunch of stories that are, are by and large already in the can. Um, this is uh, this this features a number of different people, really some some pretty great artists in there. Uh, doing their versions of everything from Doctor Strange, Black Bolt, Spider-Man, Captain Marvel. Uh, what's interesting is the Captain Marvel is in her Miss Marvel costume. Uh, so that's that's kind of funny. But anyway, um, these these titles, while they're a continuation of the Marvel Viz partnership, it is a escalation of that partnership. And the way the announcement kind of sounded and came out, it sounded like uh, Viz, there would be more basically announced very soon these titles launching in summer 2023 so basically what happened is you know the comics were in japan they were uh, they're being brought back into the u.s by viz published by viz in that instance very similar to what alex ross did probably with similar business terms so this is really something to look look at uh, because i believe that it, again this is the kind of the tip of the iceberg and if you start getting um you know Certainly through the relationship Shueisha, you get a number of creators out there who are able to take kind of Marvel properties, do something pretty cool with it, you know, make some money in Japan, certainly, but then start to bring it back. Um, and then some of the, you know, the creators inside this um, manga tribute, uh, I believe are new, uh, new contracted work. And you look at this going, how much of this is just a, uh, you know, a casting call? to see which creators might want to do their own kind of 48, 68, four page book through Viz with Marvel characters making a lot of money. Um, it's highly likely these three, you know, anthologies, you know, you're never quite sure, but certainly uh, Spider-Man fake red has all the potential to sell incredibly well, as does that Wolverine story. Um, I don't know, uh, launching on the same day, the Wolverine and Spider-Man one, I, I predict these two are just going to dominate Amazon again. And we're going to see uh, see what this looks like. But this feels and tastes a lot like the future. Um, quite frankly, it, it, it absolutely feels like where Marvel's going, where a lot of these things are going to be, how this license is going to work. And I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Marvel makes money. Viz makes more money. Maybe this is the way the game gets played. But I found this story very interesting. I think it points to a lot of where the future goes. And uh, keep your eye on it because uh, probably this is, I don't know, it, it, it is, um, I think we're seeing what the next five, 10 years is going to look like. Anyway, let me know. Are you excited about this? Is this the kind of story that you would want to see? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.